Hi, I'm the Metafictionalist. My name is Mary Olds, and I'm at the Ferndale Cemetery in California. Today I want to talk to you about visiting cemeteries, especially historic ones. Um, there's always a, an argument that comes up that if you go to a cemetery just to hang out or to look around, and you don't have someone related to you there, uh, the idea is that you might be disrespecting the cemetery. And I'm an opponent of that viewpoint. I think people should believe what they want. And I can understand that some people are wary of people coming to cemeteries and partying or disrespecting the dead. But just because you visit cemeteries, maybe even as a hobby, doesn't mean that you're actually disrespecting the dead. Most cemeteries have some guidelines for visitors and actually rely on visitors to come um, in order to get funding and donations later. Um, when you arrive at a cemetery, normally you'll see a sign that will say things such as throw your trash away, keep your dogs on a leash, no overnight parking. If you follow the rules on the cemetery sign, then you would be conforming to the wishes of the owners of the cemetery. You would be falling within the um, range of public decorum, meaning you would be following the rules. Now, as a visitor of historic cemeteries, someone who may not be visiting a grave, I think there's some other things to keep in mind and to weigh in balance. Um, when a lot of our American cemeteries were being planned out hundreds of years ago, maybe 100 years ago or 200 years ago, there was this idea floating around in the, in the culture, in the larger culture, that it was a good thing for people to visit cemeteries and they were built to be park-like. That means that beauty was a consideration and clear walkways, spaces to sit down. And the graves themselves were thoughtfully picked out and displayed different symbolism on them. Um, you see that a lot in Masonic cemeteries because uh, Freemasons are very much interested in symbolism. It's part of their whole philosophical journey that they do within their group. Um, but any Victorian era, and Victorian relates more to England, but you know, in that time period, any of these late 1800 cemeteries, even early 1900s, uh, you'll find different mourning symbols. Um, and if you're a visitor, I would suggest as part of your respectful um, voyage, um, I recommend taking note of the, the symbolism on the graves and enjoying it, taking pictures. Um, but what you don't want to do is grave robbing. You don't want to knock headstones down and take them. I think that is obvious, but I've been disappointed lately. I've been going to some historic cemeteries and um, have been encountering knocked over headstones. Sometimes it happens because of wind or because of trees, but other people come and they get really drunk at the cemetery and release their anger at Western culture by knocking down tombstones, or maybe they're just angry in general or it's fun for them. That is the ultimate disrespect. Um, and uh, there is a temptation for some people who enjoy the macabre or are developing a curio cabinet or um, are interested in um, cemetery history. I, I think that some people might be tempted to take headstones if they're already knocked down and you really shouldn't leave them there. Um, there are historical preservation societies that raise up funds and then they come and they repair headstones. It is also upsetting to me, and I think it's disrespectful, though I realize it's not on purpose, that some of these preservation societies or volunteer groups will put the headstone back together and lay it flat instead of putting it up in its original position. And why they do this is because they think, well, it won't get knocked down again. Or if it you know, is in the upright position, then it's going to crack when it gets knocked down again. Um, they believe that they're saving the headstone, but that was not the intent of the person buried. Um, it was not within the plan of the cemetery itself. Um, it's not how the headstone was 
constructed. It was meant to be upright. Um, and part of cemetery etiquette is respecting the customs of the culture. So if you want to help, okay, obviously you're not going to take the headstones, but um, if you're working with a group who actually goes out to the cemeteries and tries to preserve things, please, please, please try to find a way to preserve the headstones in their original configurations. A lot of cemeteries also kept in mind um, the cardinal directions, north, east, west, south. Um, and if you're repairing headstones, you're going to want to make sure to get that headstone back in its proper alignment. Does it mean anything in a larger sense? Not necessarily, but you don't know what the intentions were of the deceased. They might have picked, for example, a grave facing eastward for a specific purpose because then they would be in alignment with the rising sun. Others may have wanted their graves facing westward um, in order to have their resting place be graced by the sunset. So a lot of that is common sense. Um, one thing I think is odd, and I believe people should do what they want, really, but I think it is odd when people come to cemeteries and they're wearing really bright colors. They've got their um, hippie clogs on and an orange t-shirt. Do what you want. Um, I do think it would be more respectful to wear black. Um, but it's up to you. Wearing black and visiting a cemetery during their heydays, the historic ones, when they were park-like settings, that would have been appropriate. Um, obviously, people don't stay in mourning that long, but it is a place where we contemplate mortality, where we contemplate the loss families went through when they perhaps lost a child or the pillar of the family. We also... When we're here, we're contemplating um, the contributions of veterans. We're, we're thinking about how um, various community members helped the community, built it up. And so we don't want to come here and act as if it's Disneyland or something. Obviously, that's a pretty strong statement. I don't want to frame it as someone who's wearing orange and clogs with peace signs on them is being flippant and disrespectful necessarily, that they have somehow confused reality and believe they're walking through Disneyland. Not at all, because especially if you're traveling and you just really wanna see some historic landmarks, who cares what you're wearing? Um, it's just about the culture. When we visit cemeteries, we are observing a cultural facet um, that memorializes lives, that appreciates beauty that um, was planned out as a reminder of the heritage that raised up through great hardship right there's serious things to contemplate that's why i suggest black it's just a suggestion though another thing i like to do when i visit cemeteries is leave quarters around that's superstition um but that it isn't disrespectful uh, Many Christians, for example, they still observe some of these traditions where they leave maybe some coins for the dead here and there. And that's because in Occidental culture, um, the ancient Greeks believed that um, there was a ferryman who took the souls of the dead into the underworld, the ferryman Sharon, and then you have to pay the ferryman. And who knows what spirits are still here. Many people these days are materialists. They do not believe that the soul hangs out or that there is even a soul. They think we're just a collection of atoms. I believe there's evidence to prove that we are not just a collection of atoms. We do have atoms, but there's so much coincidence and synchronicity that I believe there's something more. Um, and let's say there are no spirits around. That's good. I mean, hopefully, if you if you'll be open-minded enough to accept that perhaps 
um, there's something more and that spirits go somewhere or maybe hang around. Um, if there's nothing in the cemetery, if you strongly believe there isn't, great. Because there's always this anxiety that people have about ghosts, which would perhaps be viewed as unquiet souls, souls that did not make it up, did not ascend to the heavens. Okay, so if there's none around, fine and well. Some people, they'll say that there isn't and secretly think there is and get spooked. I've been around people like that. Now let's say you're one of the believers and you think that maybe the spirits do hang around sometimes. Um, well, if that's the case, they would definitely appreciate flowers or coins. I know some people leave, leave fruit. Now, if you are a very strict Christian, a Muslim, a practitioner of one of the Jewish uh, sects, um, you might not want to do that for whatever reason. I think flowers are fairly common with monotheists and with pagans, we get more of the fruit offerings. Um, but just keep in mind that there's nothing disrespectful about leaving something in remembrance for the dead. Although, since we're talking about cemetery etiquette, a lot of cemeteries would appreciate it if you didn't actually leave fabric flowers. Now, some of you might find that surprising because, well, what could possibly be wrong with fabric flowers? The thing is, is once it starts raining and they're just left out here in the elements, they get moldy. It gets gross. And, um, that's why I recommend leaving some type of biodegradable offering if you do come to a cemetery for whatever reason. What about partying? Some people go to cemeteries and party. I know that there's a divided camp on whether that's appropriate or not. Technically, it's against the rules. Cemeteries usually close at dusk. Um, but it's also part of the culture that when young people are growing up, at a certain age, they need to find somewhere to go, and they're um, experimenting with themselves and with reality, and they're learning about socializing, and some of them are drinking a little bit, or smoking, um, and they'll go to cemeteries and do that. Is that okay? Is that not okay? Well, I'm not the law, um, and I do have a viewpoint on it which I already know some people will disagree with, but I don't really think that there's too much of a problem with people coming at any hour of the day to enjoy the cemetery, as long as they clean up after themselves and aren't too loud, because usually cemeteries are pretty close to residences. However, um, it is usually the partying crowds that end up knocking over headstones. So I'm gonna recommend not being that asshole. Um, what might be better is just visiting during daylight. And if you do, you'll be able to take pictures. I think taking pictures is a good thing. Some people don't understand it. They don't get it. Again, there's always this apprehension um, within certain people who might come from different cultures or who might um, observe a more strict form of monotheism. They might be not really think taking pictures is appropriate because they might view it as stark entertainment that you're just being glib about death um however just because that they, they have those viewpoints doesn't mean that's necessarily correct um it doesn't hurt anybody to take photos right it doesn't hurt the graves to take photos I, I believe that some cemeteries might have rules about flashes, but those will be posted if there are rules. And of course, I recommend following the rules <laughs> for the most part. Although, you know, I don't think anyone will be struck by lightning for drinking a beer in the cemetery at night. Um, and in fact, the whole idea of socializing at a cemetery and leaving an offering has deep roots within Western culture, pre-Christian culture. Um, it's something we can view as libations for the dead, that you're, again, leaving something in remembrance and offering to the dead. And for those of you who misunderstand or who might not know or are curious about why people would want to be at a cemetery, because from what I understand, some people think that they're depressing places, of death just reminding you that you're going to die. 
the idea is to celebrate life. It's not about celebrating death so much as it is about celebrating life and learning more about the community, seeing where the founding fathers and mothers of the community lie. Um, it's about appreciation. And again, if you come from um, a pagan background, some type of polytheistic background, there might be ancestor worship or um, certain spiritual observances that you need to do in cemeteries. From what I understand, um, I was editing for a Buddhist temple for a while, and apparently, long, long ago, Buddhist monks were encouraged to meditate at cemeteries. And it wasn't to be morbid, but it was about understanding how fleeting life is. So we get an Eastern uh, example of funerary visitation, of um, connecting with spirituality in the cemetery. And then again, in the Western tradition, um, when we're talking pre-Christian times, we might think of it as, well, we're honoring our family at a certain time, perhaps um, like around Halloween and leaving offerings, showing that um, we still care if there is a spirit around we're here still paying respects and loving even after after death all of that being said I'm a historic cemetery enthusiast and every once in a while I will be filming at cemeteries um, I find cemeteries peaceful incredibly peaceful and it allows me to clear my mind and think about the topics that I'm interested in um, and I have a background in literature I do writing fictional writing non-fictional writing I love the metaphysical aspects of contemplation um, contemplating those big questions about what is existence <laughs> uh, what is essence what is substance and that goes along with um, more supernatural topics, right? Like um, telepathy or, you know, the nature of coincidences. Is there free will or predestination? So I'm interested in a lot of topics that require deep thinking. And I do my best thinking at cemeteries. Um, and I'm not thinking about bad things. I'm not thinking about death or dying. And I'm not enjoying the fact that people die. That's not what it's about. It's just a place where... I feel like I'm honoring the, the people who have departed, that I remember and celebrate them, um, and it's quiet here. And so I'm in a good place psychologically to talk about some of these topics. And I hope that you'll join me. Um, this channel won't be for everybody, but if you're interested, welcome. All right, that's it for today.